Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue the course of advanced mathematics for uh, teenagers presented on unizor.com. Um, I do suggest you to watch this lecture from this website because it contains uh, notes. Well, in this particular case, notes are basically um, the problems which we are going to solve today and answers and uh, I would definitely encourage you to try to solve these problems just by yourself. Uh, check with the answer if you are correct, and that would be probably even a better um, schooling for you than to just watch this lecture. Anyway, I will present these problems right now. I will try to solve them. I will try not to make any arithmetic mistakes, which I know I can do. Um, and well, basically, let's just start solving problems. It's about cones. Um, I have uh, how many? One, two, three, four, five problems. So let's just go one by one. All right. So the first problem, well, it might have been actually presented as a theoretical material. Um, I did not really mention in uh, previous lectures the concept of a truncated cone. So let's do it now. So let's consider you have a cone and then you truncated it by a plane which is parallel to the base. Now this is the radius. This is the overall height. Now let's consider you have a plane parallel to the base or perpendicular to the x-axis and it cuts this circle. Now the fact that this is a circle is obvious because this plane is parallel to this plane which means that if you take any two points here and here now these difference uh, th these two radiuses are the same right so it's very easy to prove that these are also the same um, by let's say Um, cutting the plane through the axis through this point then it will um, actually intersect this uh, circle at this point and um, from the parallelism of this uh, of these planes uh, follows the parallelism of these two lines obviously right because it's two parallel planes intersecting by, by, by one line so it looks like these guys are proportional to the altitudes right and the same thing exactly with any other uh, two points uh, obtained by another uh, plane. So that's why we have the proportionality between these and this also like altitudes. And since these are equal to each other, these two will be also equal to each other because they are proportional to the same uh, ratio of the altitudes. Okay, so that's simple, that's a side issue. So every plane parallel to the base cuts a circle. Now, if I will replace this cone with a truncated cone, Now, the obvious problem is to evaluate its volume in terms of now two radiuses, right, R1 and R2, and the height, which is H. So, we need the formula, basically. Formula of the volume in terms of R1, R2, and H. All right, let's do it. Uh, obviously, we will calculate the volume of this truncated cone as a difference between volume of the big cone and the volume of the small cone on the top, right? So what we don't know about these two things is this piece called H, right? So this is H from the apex to the top of the smaller uh, circle, the smaller base. Well, but we can very easily determine this. Now, consider the proportionality be be between these triangles and obviously uh, H 
lowercase h to r2 equals big altitude to r1. Big altitude is h plus h to r1, right? From here, we can determine lowercase h in terms of r1, r2, and h. And then, having all these parameters at hand, we will just calculate the volume of the truncated uh, cone as a difference between two volumes. So, from here, hr1 equals hr2 plus lowercase hr2. From here, h is equal to, this goes to this, say hr2 divided by r1 minus r2, right? I just solved this linear equation, um, transfer hr2 to the left by subtracting hr2 from both sides, and that will have h times r1 minus r2, that's why I divide. Okay, fine. Now, knowing this, we can calculate the big volume. Okay, the volume 1, let's say. It's equal to volume of the whole pyramid, uh, cone. It's uh, one third pi r1 square times the height, which is h plus lowercase h. So it's h plus hr2 divided by r1 minus r2. So that's my top pyramid, the big pyramid. Uh, sorry, cone, not pyramid, cone. Uh, now the small cone uh, has a volume 1, so I have to subtract. 1 third pi r2 square, that's the area of the base. So one third area of the base, and the height is lowercase h, which is this one. H r two r one minus r two equals. <coughs> so um, we really should somehow simplify this thing. Well, it's uh, one third pi r1 square times, well, I don't really need this parenthesis. Um, if I will use the common denominator, it will be uh, hr1 minus hr2 and plus hr2. So it will be hr1 divided by r1 minus r2 minus one third pi r2 square h r2 divided by r1 minus r2 okay now I don't need this anymore so what could we do here um, well obviously we should uh, one third pi h divided by r minus r one minus r two and open parenthesis r one square and r one would be r one cube minus r two cube r two cube everything else is outside of the parentheses, one third pi h and r minus r one minus r two. So this is almost the end of it. You can simplify it by dividing r one cube minus r two cube. As we all know, this is equal to r one square plus r one r two plus r two square. If you don't remember it, you can always try. Multiply this by this and you will get this r1 cube minus r1 square r2 and then there will be plus r2 square r1 and then there will be r1 r2 square with a plus so whatever is necessary will cancel out and that will be the remaining and this is the formula this is the answer so in terms of r1 r2 and h this is the 
volume of the truncated uh, cone. Number two. Okay, side surface. Uh huh. Okay, so if you have a cone and you cut it, you cut it by one of its generatrix, which goes along the side surface, all right? Connecting an apex with one particular point um, on a circle, which is the base. You can roll it out into a sector. We are already talking about this. It will be a sector. So, if this is R and this is H, now the uh, side, uh, the length of this uh, line along the side, uh, the, the generatrix, let's say, would be L. Uh, and obviously L square is equal to R square plus H square from the Pyth Pythagorean theorem. Now if you will roll it out on a flat uh, surface then the radius of this sector would be L, right? Because you are using all these points on the circle they are becoming this arc and the arc length would be 2 pi r, where r is the radius, right? So if this is the cone, this is the result of its uh, rolling out after the cut along the uh, generatrix. Now, what's known about this is the area of this thing is s, and this angle is 120 degrees. That's given. R and L and H, whatever else, it's not given. Uh, and we have to determine the volume. Okay, first of all, let's just think about it. How many parameters define the cone? Well, two parameters, let's say R and H. Everything else can be derived from it. For two parameters, we need two equations, right? So, and these two equations are given, basically. There is one information, there is an in angle of 120 degree, and there is another information about the area of the side surface. So, basically we somehow should represent the angle and, uh, and the surface in terms of R and H and we will get, get two equations with, with, with two unknowns and then we will solve them for R and H and then we will de determine the volume. Alright? Alright, so, what can we say about this? Well, first of all, we have a very easy um, thing here. It's 120 degrees. It's one-third of the full circle of 360, right? Now, the full circle of the radius L has the length 2 pi L. At the same time, it's three times greater than this. So it's three times 2 pi R. So what follows is that L is equal to 3R. Okay? That's important. Now, the surface area, uh, the side surface um, area is S. That's given. Now, do you remember how the side surface area is represented in terms of H and R or L or whatever? Well, um, let me just remind you. I will use exactly the same thing. I will cut it and open it up, right? So I know that the whole circle uh, area is pi L square, right? Now, um, if this uh, uh, arc has the length 2 pi R and the whole, squ uh, the whole circle has the length 2 pi L, then what I can say is that whatever uh, uh, part of the whole circle, whole circumference, this 2 pi r takes, which is 2 pi r divided by 2 pi l. That's the ratio of the this area relative to the area of the whole circle. So s divided by pi l squared. So what do we have from here? 
L square L, we have the S equals pi R L, right? Pi R L. So this is the formula which we have derived a long time ago. And instead of L, we can always have square root of H square plus R square. But this is the formula. So let's just write it here. S equals to pi R L equals to pi R square root R square plus H square. So we will use it. And this is our second equation because S is given, right? So S is given, which means this is given. And this is another equation. So we have two equations. Now, um, I think it would be easier uh, if I will also have uh, L square here. Do we need L square or not? Uh, actually, we probably don't need L square. I'll just use directly this formula. Okay, so S, which is given, is equal to pi R L. And L is 3 R. So it's 3 pi R square. Now, from this, we can determine R. R is equal to S divided by 3 P. Uh, 3 pi uh, square root, right? S divided S divided by 3 pi is equal to R square, so R is equal to this. So we got R. Now from this, we can actually uh, define H. Let's put it this way. L square, which is equal to H square plus R square, is equal to square of this, 9R square. Okay, so h square is equal to 8r square, and h is equal to r square root of 8, or 2r square root of 2, right? Because 8 is 4 times 2, square root of 4 is 2, and square root of 2 is remaining. So I have h, and I know uh, r here, so I can find out what's my h exactly. h is equal to 2 square root of 2 times r. r is this. Square root of s divided by square root of 3 pi. So I have r and I have h. All I need is what? The volume, right? Alright, so let's just Volume is equal to now it's just you know pure technicality and as 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 I was saying I always one third pi r square which is s divided by three pi times h which is two square root of two square root of three pi and square root of s. <coughs> right um, what else we, we, we can simplify it a little bit basically I don't know um, we probably should multiply it by square root of 3 pi so we don't have radicals in the um, so we will have what pi and pi are reducing so we will have s square root of s, 2 square root of 2, uh, square root of 3 pi. I multiply by 3 pi and I, in, in the, the denominator I will have therefore uh, just 3 pi times 3 times 3, it's 27 pi, something like this, right? Is this right? 2s, yeah, that's what it is. You can combine square root of 2 with square root of 3. So it's 2 uh, square root of 6 pi s square root of s divided by 27 pi. Well, that's the, not a very pleasant formula, but anyway, we did the problem. We did solve it. That's the answer.
All right. Two down, three to go. Hmm. Okay, this is a very interesting problem, actually. Here is what's that, what's given. So, given um, side surface area S. And what also is given is the following. Consider this as one of the uh, generatrix, so a point connecting the the apex with a, s uh, a single point uh, in the base along the straight line. Now, if I will have this plane OAB and I will draw a perpendicular to AB within this plane that would be distance d and that's also a given d is given now obviously if you take any other uh, line like this on the surface and connect it with this one and draw a perpendicular it will be the same d right because these triangles a b prime o and a b o are obviously uh, congruent because they are all right triangles with a common catheters and other catheters, uh, other catheters are radiuses of the circle, right? So they are uh, uh, right triangles with uh, equal catheter. So that's why the perpendicular, the altitude to a hypotenuse would be always the same or this one, for instance. So these are all D. These are all perpendiculars from the center to generatrices. All right? That's, D. That's given. Well, question is the value. All right. So I actually um, first solved this problem like directly, without thinking much. Um, and that's what, I what, that's what I'm going to do right now, All right? So let's assume that this is R and this is H. So what I would like to do is, in terms of R and H, I will um, uh, put the surface area. Now I know it's pi R L, which is uh, pi R square root of, all right, don't have enough space here. So here, equation is S is equal to pi R square root of R square plus, plus H square, right? Pi R L, where L is this particular diagonal, uh, hypotenuse of this triangle. Now, at the same time, if you consider just this right triangle, H R L, where L is this, this is D. How to determine D? Well, obviously, the area of this triangle is R times H, well, one half of this, and it's equal to one half of L times D, right? This is, this is base and this is altitude, or this is base and this is altitude. So from here, D is equal to RH divided by L. So that's my second equation. R H divided by square root of R square plus H square. Now I have to find from these two equations I can find uh, R and H, right? And calculate my value. So I did that. Um, how can we resolve it easier? Um, mm, well, we can say something like this. R H is equal to G square root of R square plus H square. And uh, S uh, 
divided by pi r is equal to square root of r square plus h square, right? So we can substitute this to this. We will have rh equals ds divided by pi r. So pi r square uh, h pi r square h is equal to d times s, right? Hmm, that's interesting. This is basically almost the formula for the volume. It's triple, so one third of this pi r square h, which is the volume of the cone, is equal to uh, s times d divided by 3. It's too simple, right? Now, and then I was thinking, why this is such a simple formula? <coughs> it looks like there are complicated calculations, but, it, but the formula seems to be very simple. Strange, right? And then, as I was thinking, I came up with a perfect, ex per perfect explanation. Let me just draw this better. Okay, here is my cone. Okay, let's take two planes which are connecting two lines, two uh, generators, and consider This is C and this is B. This is O. Consider A, B, C and O in front of it. What is it? It's a triangular pyramid, right? Now, if I will consider A, B, C as a plane, this uh, pyramid is basically almost like a sector of the cone. So the plane ABC, the triangle ABC, the base of this um, pyramid, is very much close to a surface of the uh, of the cone, right? Now, if my uh, points B and C are closer to each other, then this line will almost be like a circle, right? The closer B and C together, the closer uh, segment BC would be an arc BC, right? So that's how we were calculating something like an area of the uh, circle, if you remember. We doubled the number of uh, sides of this inscribed polygons and the more uh, uh, vertices we have placed on the circle the closer perimeter would be to uh, to a circumference right so now, now here we have exactly the same situation but it's a, in a three-dimensional thing the triangle ABC would be closer and closer to the surface of the cone so now if I will divide my circle into many small pieces the volume would be divided into small pyramids like these ones right and the volume of any individual pyramid would be what area of uh, ABC ABC right if O is apex so I need the area times the distance from O to this triangle ABC, right, which is like call it H, whatever, divided by three. So one third of the area of the base, which is a triangle ABC, times the altitude, which is from O to some whatever point P. Now, if I will add them all together, all these pyramids areas of ABC 
together A, B, C and A, C, D and etc. etc. They will be more or less like a side surface of the uh, cone. And the H, the, the, the distance from uh, center to this plane, would be very much, as soon as my B and C are closer, it would be very much like the distance from uh, this center O to a generatrix which goes somewhere here. So, the more uh, uh, vertices we will put on this, uh, on this circle, the closer the total volume of all these pyramids will be to the volume of the uh, uh, cone. The sum of all bases, uh, sum of all uh, areas of the bases will be uh, closer to the side surface of the cone and the altitude of each pyramid will be very much like this distance from O to a generatrix on the uh, side of the, of the cone. And that's why as soon as I will go to a limit with the number of divisions um, going to infinity and, my, my, and, and sum them all together, the total area would be S and this uh, H would be D. And that's why we have this uh, particular um, simple answer to this problem. Okay. But I have came up with this only after I saw that the formula is very simple. I didn't really think about this. I just solved it first uh, directly without any. Okay, side surface is twice as big as base. Okay, so again, we have a cone. And side surface, which is pi r l, is twice as big as pi r square, right? Now this is h, this is r, and this is l. And obviously l is equal to square root of r square plus h square. It's just more convenient to use side surface in this format. All right, so I've got that. Side surface is twice as big as base. Now, central section through the main axis. So, if I will um, cut this cone with a plane going through the main axis, through the main altitude, which connects the apex with the center of the base, it will cut a triangle, obviously, right? So, within this triangle, the area of this triangle let's call it BC area of B uh, ABC is equal to S find the volume okay all right let's find the volume well in terms of R and H the area of ABC obviously is what? This is a diameter, right? Since we cut the plane through the point O, this is a straight line, so it's BC is equal to 2R. So the base is equal to R of this triangle, the height is H, so 2R uh, times H divided by 2, that's the area of the triangle, and it's equal to S. So we have two equations one and two all we need is again it's technicality right now to find out r and h well l is equal to this <coughs> all right so let's just do it let's do it a little bit simpler so from here i can um, reduce by pi r and i will have what that L is equal to uh, 2R. So square root of R square plus H square is equal to 2R. That's one equation. And the second equation is R times H is equal to S. That's my system of two equations with two, with two unknowns, right? Um, okay, let's square this one. We will get 
r square plus h square is equal to 4 r square h square is equal to r square times 3 h is equal to r square root of 3 we can substitute it into this so we will have r square square root of 3 right equals s so r is equal to uh, square root of s divided by square but root of the fourth degree of, of 3 right from here r is equal to square root of s divided by square root of square root of 3 which is fourth degree okay I've got r and uh, h here and h is equal to r times square root of 3 which is square root of s, square root of 3, divided by square root of, uh, fourth root of 3. Now, what is square root of 3 divided by fourth root of 3? This will be square, square root of square root, which is fourth uh, of 3. Right? Square root of, uh, again, fourth root of 3 times fourth root of 3 is square root of 3, right? So that's why if you divide this by this, you will get this. So I've got both. Uh, but I can do actually, well, I'll, I'll simplify it later. All right, so now all we need to do is substitute it into the formula for the volume. One third pi r square h equals to one third pi. R square is this, which is s divided by square root uh, square root of three, right? Fourth root of three, double. I mean, in square would be square root of three. times h, and h is square root of s fourth root of 3. Well, that's the answer. And if you don't want to have this... Uh, now let me check. Well, um, you probably should multiply it by square root of 3 to get rid of the radical in the denominator. So in denominator we will have 3 and 3 and, and 3 which is 9. So on the top we will have pi s square root of s. Now what is this? This is square root of 4, uh, fourth root of 3, sorry, times uh, fourth root of 9, right? Square root of 3 is fourth root of 9, same thing, divided by 9, 3 times 3 which is pi s square root of s, fourth root of 27, 3 times 9, divided by 9. So that's the answer. All right. Four down, one to go. I hope you're not scared with all these fourth degree uh, roots and stuff like this. Well, that's what it is. <coughs> All right. Here's an interesting problem. Uh, okay, you have a cone. Altitude. And you divide the altitude into n equal parts. So somewhere here you will have a1, a2, etc., a k minus 1, a k, and the base would be, uh, center of the base would be a n, right? So we have n minus 1 from 1 to n, from a1 to a, a n, n minus 1 division points which divide into n pieces. All right? Now, let's cut with the planes through each point. So 
So you have n truncated uh, cones. Well, actually n minus 1 are truncated and the top one is not truncated. So, question is, if you will take the cone number k, what is its volume? Uh, in case you know uh, the volume of the whole cone and you know the number of divisions. All right? Okay, now this is actually a very simple problem. It sounds complicated, but it's simple. Um, let's have the plane representation of this. Let's cut the whole thing by a plane which goes through the central um, axis from A0 to, to AN. Um, and it will cut the whole cone in section which looks like this. Right? This is a k, this is a k minus 1, this is a n, this is a 0. Now, obviously, let's call this one r, which is equal to rn. This would be r k minus 1, this is r k. Now, and let's talk about these heights. This one would be H N, this one would be H K, this one would be H K minus 1. Now, obviously, you have the similarity of all this, right? So, how can we de determine what is the value of R K in terms of R, let's say? Well, very simply, since the distance from A0 to AK is K times small part and the small part is actually is equal to H divided by uh, capital N, right? Where H is the whole height. So it's uh, so the height which is HK is equal to H divided by N times k. Same thing radius rk because it's all proportional, right? So it's r divided by n times k. Now, since you know this, you can find out this truncated cone as a difference between the kth cone and k minus 1 cone, right? So the volume of the truncated part would be the one third pi r k squared times h k, right? Minus one third pi r k minus one squared times h k minus one equals one third pi open parenthesis. R k is k nth of the of the r, so it's k n of the r square times h k which is k n of the h minus one third pi now instead of k I should put k minus one r divided by n square and k minus one h n equals so what do we have now? Well we can one third pi r square h out of the parenthesis and actually n also we can put out of the parenthesis n square and n n cube that's what it is 
So let me just write it more accurately. So it would be pi r square h divided by 3 n cube. Pi out, 3 out, n cube out, r square h, r square h out. What would be inside? Well, k cube minus k minus 1 cube. That's what it is. Now, this is the volume v, which is given to us. So the whole thing is equal to v divided by n cube times k cube minus k minus 1 cube. That's the answer. That's it. Um, I do suggest you, if you didn't do it before, um, why don't you go through the same problems again and try to solve them by yourself. Check the answers. Answers are on the web page. And good luck. Thank you.